I suppose the adventure with the vineyard started a very long time ago, probably when I was a child, when my parents took us on long holidays to Pembrokeshire. We walked the Pembrokeshire coastline. My mother taught me the names of every single wildflower. So I think plants were in my DNA from the very beginning. I inherited the land from my father, who died when I was in my early 20s. And I didn't do anything with it to start with, because I was running the family firm, Potatoes. I was trying to think of a plant that stayed put for a long period of time. And uh, a vine always was in the back of my mind because they can live for so long. 200 years, 300 years, a hell of a long time. So bit by bit, vines came into the thought process, but it didn't actually start there. It started with the design of the label before anything else. In 1979 or thereabouts, Harlick Television was filming one of Owen Glyndur's Many Bloody Battles, which was fought just two fields from here, uh, based on 1406. So I thought that if we planted a vineyard, we'll call ourselves after Glyndur. So we drew up the label, which is on those bottles there. And so we had the image, and then I had to set about learning about viticulture. And in the end, you take the plunge or you don't. So I just went ahead and ordered 6,000 vines that arrived one March day in 1982, I think it was. And that's how it began, basically. As a child growing up here at Glyndur Vineyard, it was so magical, so many memories running up and down the rows of the vines, helping at harvest and taking huge bucket loads of grapes up to the tractor. All of my childhood memories are based here and it's such a, a big thing for me to say, this is now my job and my profession, and I've got such passion to put into it for the future. We sell three different types of wine, a rosé, a red, and a white still wine. Plus we've got our sparkling rosé and our sparkling white. We've recently introduced three new items. We've got a lager, a beer, and a cider, all named after our llamas. So we've got legless llama, lager llama, and Lazy Llama. Um, we sell them to some really reputable outlets in the Celtic Manor Hotel, all of the Waitroses in Wales, and very, very proud to say the John Lewis on Oxford Street in London. We've recently started doing a lot of tours. People are really interested, and it's also great for us to share our passion for our vineyard and our wines with the public. Sometimes it's a bit isolating working in the vineyard your whole life. It's lovely to have people here, give them home-cooked food, tour the vineyard, plus a range of wines to try and sample. The future for Glinda Vineyard is about weddings. We do a very small number, but really high quality and really special and unique. Uh, we've got our B&B and our accommodation here at the vineyard, which we'd love to improve and promote. And the future is about my brother and I taking over as the next generation and putting new innovative ideas into the vineyard, but also taking on the history that Dad's left us. Throughout these years, with the weather throwing everything at it, especially this summer, endless rain and winds, you can still grow grapes here. That is very satisfying. 
And at the end of the day, I suppose you sit down with a glass of your wine and you're happy with the quality. I suppose that uh, is everything that you look forward to in the whole process. But you do need patience. <laughs>